Ladies and gentlemen, fellow travelers on the road to a climate resilient future, I'm glad you could make it to this online webinar. Today is an important milestone on our journey to the International Climate Adaptation Summit on the 25th of January 2021. That day, global leaders will launch a comprehensive global adaptation action agenda, setting out concrete new endeavors and partnerships to make our world more resilient to the effects of climate change by 2030. There's no time to waste. Every minute, as I'm speaking to you now, almost one million tons of ice melts in Greenland and Antarctica. The COVID-19 crisis shows how vulnerable we are, how unprepared we are to respond effectively when a pandemic catches us by surprise. But climate change is no surprise. The effects are apparent here and now. Droughts, floods, heavy storms, rising temperatures and a rising sea level. We're in trouble now, so we need to adapt now. Let's share knowledge and expertise on this. Let's join forces around the world to accelerate adaptation action on a much larger scale than ever before. I won't stop repeating this call to action. Our country, the Netherlands, has made a name for itself through centuries of water management and adaptation. So today we're showcasing some examples of Dutch innovations. Nine interactive webinars focusing on Dutch adaptation approach and how we can share this knowledge with the rest of the world. Dealing with water is in our Dutch DNA. Climate change doesn't only compel us to protect our heritage, our heritage can also protect us. Today, the Netherlands National Commission for UNESCO will present local and traditional knowledge that will instill the right level of urgency in our minds. My personal goal is to help scale up global efforts in adapting to the inevitable effects of climate change. I'm happy you're joining me in this venture. I wish you all a constructive and inspiring day. Um, you may think, what has our heritage got to do with climate change? And maybe you see heritage consultants as being uh, very aimed at protecting heritage um, and preserving heritage. Or maybe you have, have experienced heritage as being a bit difficult or slowing your process down. Uh, maybe you haven't never thought of it in this, um, in this context at all. But of course, it's very important to uh, preserve our spatial qualities for the future. So whatever it is, I hope I can give you a small insight of our research project, Water Cancer, about using heritage knowledge and how it can benefit climate adaptation measures. So we wanted to try a different approach. We wanted to step away from the preserving attitude and we wanted to develop a new attitude. Uh, we believe that cultural historical knowledge can also contribute to find solutions for current challenges such as climate adaptation. And we think you can find modern solutions in our past. Um, but this requires a completely different approach from experts, both of heritage, also of water management. Uh, but I think that adapting uh, to these new attitudes lies the future of our working area in the future. And not only for climate change, but also for energy and renewable energy and other social uh, challenges. Because if you are not, if you, if you are aware of your water tradition and you use it well, you are preserving and developing your cultural history. Next slide, please. Well, as you may know, the Netherlands is a delta, and um, uh, we have adapted uh, to water for centuries. We have always used water for transport or irrigations. We made new lands, we made small hills to build our houses on, and we fought against the rising water. And our land consists of water systems with items like rivers, canals, dikes, ditches, barks, barge canals and pumping stations and what have you. And all these items and all these um, water systems have developed over many centuries. Um, um, and this is our water heritage, all that development. But due to recent interventions like more and higher dikes, uh, and closure dams and drainage and sluices, um, water is no often longer an acute threat to us. And as a result of that, residents are no longer aware of our water management. 
But with the climate challenges, our water history becomes suddenly topical again, and the challenges we now face do not stand alone. It's a tradition that we pass on to future generations. It's not a stone monument, it's alive and it's useful. And sometimes the elements of the past, they give you reason or uh, rise to make new additions, so you can use that. And if you use the history of the addition, if you use the history, the addition becomes more logical with a sense of place, and it can help find solutions. And also for design, you can link design with your past. Um, because we think every place has a water history, and we think if you find the story, um, uh, and the inspiration for form and, and, and function will follow. So in a nutshell, this was on the slide, our research question. Can cultural knowledge contribute to climate change adaptation? Um, we're not scientists, uh, but we're practical. So we wanted to put this research question into a practice at a location with a real problem, a real people. And we found that in the city of Kampen. So I will take you to Kampen. Um, Kampen was always a wet and marshy place by the river Iso. It's an important trade route. And the town started off with a group of merchants in the 13th century. And they built turfs, so little hills, in which they built their houses. And from that on, the city of Kampen developed. And it became one of the main medieval trading cities in the Netherlands. And at this moment, it's a really small, beautiful historical town. And the site that we worked on is on the Schans Bolwerk Buitenwacht in Kampen. And it's located on the river dike on the opposite side of the river of the town. And in between the town and the Schans is the Isel Bridge. And the Schans, that's an earthen embankment and it's part of the medieval defense system of the city. Uh, and it's one of the main entrances now to the city. It's really, really a beautiful spot. It's a few meters higher than the rest of the of the surroundings, and you have a beautiful view of the riverfront of the city. So it's a really beautiful place with a lot of potential, but it's also a sort of um, it's a sort of nothing and everything kind of place. It's um, it's got a lot of traffic movements: trains, buses, cyclists, cars, and people on foot. It's got a lot of empty grounds, a lot of asphalt, uh, unattended green spots, uh, parking lots. Um, so the spatial design is very, very unclear, and it's not very attractive, but still you sense the beauty and the potential everywhere on that spot. There are um, two water problems. One is that we have more and heavier downpours, and the water comes from the bridge over the embankment, down to the slopes, and into the streets and the houses below. And the other problem is that the water is not able to go anywhere because uh, the sewer cannot handle this amount of water, and the soil is part clay. So the streets and houses are flooding, and the basements are permanently filled with water, even these dry years we have had. And um, the municipal has been working on a solution for over eight years, but could not succeed on making a plan that had the support of the inhabitants and the entrepreneurs. But they were in communication, so that's good. But that was our, our starting point. Um, and we have prepared a short video for you, so you can see the place, and you can see all a small introduction of what we have done. Video, please. In Kampen, in the province of Overijssel, close to the station, lies the Bolwerk Baltenwacht region. For years now, the municipality has been working on a plan to restructure this area. It does this in collaboration with residents and entrepreneurs, but also with the local water authority, the National Cultural Heritage Agency, and Het Overstucht. We have been ourselves the opgave gesteld om te kijken van wat is er. Uh, op deze plek al gebeurt in het water. Hoe zijn mensen op deze plek al met het water omgegaan? To find out where the remains from times past are still present in the ground. Soil drillings have been performed and geophysical research has been done. A sort of ultrasound has been made of the area. Results show that in the past the Bongwerk was an earthen embankment and that there are no longer any foundations present in the ground that the new design can be based on. Wat het Oversticht doet, is eigenlijk in de geschiedenis duiken om te kijken wat we daar kunnen vinden wat mogelijk een oorzaak zou kunnen zijn van wateroverlast. En we kijken ook na van wat zou de aanleidingen kunnen zijn om maatregelen die we nu zouden kunnen gaan treffen. The results of the cultural, historical and hydrology analyses are used to acquire new insights. 
and thus the realization of a design finally materializes. Eigenlijk komt de kennis hier samen om die kennis vervolgens te uh, uh, ontwerpen, te onderzoeken van wat zou er dan mogelijk zijn in deze locatie. The cultural historical knowledge has contributed to the design and has provided a better picture of the water system, as well as helping to gain the support of the residents. And so a useful contribution has been made in the creation of a renewed part of Compen. Chief, please. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so we have merged our knowledge with the current water data and with the knowledge of the sewers and the hydrolyst. Um, and uh, it was so much fun to do that because they know every inch of the whole water system. It was really brilliant to do that. And um, because of those conversations and work sessions uh, and exchanging knowledge, we got different views and new insights and new solutions. But there's still a lot to discover. We are really in our early stages of research on uh, uh, water systems. Uh, we, we also heard everything that could go wrong in the process with design or management or knowledge gaps. So working integral is crucial, but it's difficult. Uh, and it became clear to us that should, we should not only combine our content, but also set up a good process for it. Next slide, please. And as researchers, we, uh, we know how to gather information through old city plans, data from researchers that have already been done, uh, landscape knowledge, old photographs, and of course the archives. And if you combine all the data, you have a good idea of how the water system developed over five or six centuries. But the water authorities, uh, they are the oldest governments we have here in the Netherlands, and they did have not have their archives quickly enclosed disclosed, I should say, um, they never thought of the archives as an important source of information about water systems. Some do, of course, but most of the engineers and the hydrologists do not use it very often. But we were surprised about that, but we see their archives as their corporate heritage and the archives itself is heritage and put together is really the fundament of our water heritage. So. We urge the water authorities to make sure that the information is digitally uh, accessible to uh, researchers and make sure that someone knows um, uh, knows and can get the transfers the knowledge to researchers and employees and managers. Um, because it's a gold mine. We think that archives are a gold man mine for it and good for a good process. Next slide, please. So in this process, um, we are trying to connect the dots because every organization has its own responsibilities towards water and water problems. And even, even different teams from the same organizations have different tasks. So it can easily go wrong in stupid little things you're not even aware of. Um, and one thing we have learned in the process is that people tend to start at looking for solutions and already designing them. Uh, and we really urge them not to do that, to stay, uh, start with research and get to know the place and get to know each other um, and what is already agreed on. So talk to the experts involved. So in the process, it's good to integrate a few times and to share results and knowledge and uh, possible causes and solutions. So together with all the experts, inhabitants and governments, it's good to look at the assignment from all points of view at the same time. And we used uh, uh, design research as an instrument because spatial qualities are the key word because in the end, that is what you will see in the streets. Um, the process from our starting point until we had the support of the inhabitants and entrepreneurs in the city council was six months. So it was rather quickly. So in the end, it saves really a lot of time. It prevents mistakes. You get more support and it's faster and cheaper. Next slide, please. And the results are um, uh, that the new approach works. Uh, we know, uh, because we know how the place had developed itself, we understood the place better, and that was the fundament for choosing a good solution. Uh, it contributed to design, and an eight year process was concluded in six months. And the extra result, the bonus result, and we did really didn't see this coming, is that we got support from the local people and the city council for these measures through heritage. Most of the time, it's the other way around. You must find support for preserving heritage. You get support and acceptance for something totally different 
climate change adaptation. So this small shift in perspective is very interesting. You can use cultural, cultural history in a, as an instrument if you do it well. And we do, we develop more projects um, and using this perspective, but all, not only on climate change, also on renewable energy. But it's hard to find organizations who are willing to try this because it's a new way. Well, if you've been working in a certain way with certain policies and rules, you and you have done it for a long time, it's very hard to look at your playing field with new eyes. But if your playing field is changing, and, and that is for heritage and water experts, you just have to adjust. You have to look for new possibilities, new solutions, and maybe adjust your minds and attitudes and policies. And we think that heritage can be a useful instrument for modern water management because our landscape is constantly changing. We always adjust, that's the whole game. And the important thing is when and how we adjust. This can be our future heritage. And it's really the beauty of it. You work in a tradition and you pass it on. Um, and with doing so, you preserve your heritage. So I hope you can connect water management with heritage, put it on the agendas and bring it into practice. Thank you. <laughs>